On March 23rd of this year, an article was published about how the sun may be conscious. You might have seen the headline make the rounds. It's an incredibly short read, and admittedly doesn't sound very confident in its own claim, saying within the first sentence that it's a bong rip of a theory. But is there any weight to it? Turns out there may be more mystery to the stars than we originally thought. So sit back, grab yourself a mug of tea, and take a journey into the cosmos with me. So first, I want to preface that I am not an astrophysicist. I'm just a moth in a library. I'll be quoting people who are specialized in this, and I'll be providing further reading in the description below. Before we can determine if the sun is alive, we should first understand how it works. To summarize, stars are large nuclear reactors that fuse hydrogen atoms together into helium to make energy, which is expressed as light and heat. This radiates throughout the solar system, and is theorized to be a key player in the formation of life on this planet. A less talked about component of the sun is the corona, the outer atmosphere of the sun. During a solar eclipse, it's that white halo you see around the moon. And when you see aurora borealis, that comes from the corona interacting with the Earth's magnetosphere. Perhaps most importantly, the corona protects the solar system from cosmic rays that originate in deep space. Keep this all in mind for later. So if the sun is a floating nuclear furnace, why would we consider if it's alive or not? Your oven and toaster aren't alive, they're just machines. What makes the sun different? What signs of life does it exhibit? Does it appear to have a mind of its own? Well, therein lies the problem. The definitions of life and consciousness aren't as concrete as we'd like to believe. If you look up the characteristics of life, the common consensus describes at least seven. Order, sensitivity or response to stimuli, reproduction, growth and development, regulation, homeostasis, and energy processing. On the surface, many of these don't apply to the sun. It doesn't reproduce, respond to stimuli, or maintain an internal temperature or pH. It seems to act just like a machine. However, there's another machine at the microscopic level that doesn't fit these definitions, but drives debate on whether it's alive or not. Viruses. They don't exhibit as much complexity as, say, a cell, yet they act like parasites and reproduce using living entities. But are viruses alive? That depends on who you ask, but it does show that even technically non-alive entities can show some degrees of life. And as it turns out, the sun isn't different. Its complex systems of convection currents created by its electromagnetic field actually does have a role in maintaining its internal functions, meaning it technically fits the definition of homeostasis. Similarly, life tends to have some form of motion, but the sun is just a stationary entity, isn't it? Well, the sun does move as it orbits around the center of the galaxy, but the gravitational calculations don't account for how fast these stars move. Many scientists have chalked these anomalies to dark matter, but there's another possible explanation. Solar flares. It's possible they could act as a form of locomotion, similar to a squid's tendrils. Granted, this hasn't been tested yet, but in theory, all you'd have to do is observe if solar flares are more common on one side of a star than determine its movement through the cosmos and compare the two. Maybe we'll see them test this theory soon. Now, you might say these are circumstantial and that the sun could only be considered alive so far as a fire or a virus. But that doesn't mean it's conscious, right? Well, there are some theories that the sun's complexity and electromagnetic fluxes may act as a sort of computer consciousness. There are some phenomena about the sun that can't be explained by our current laws of the universe, most notably coronal heating. The main premise of this problem is that the corona, the atmosphere around the sun's surface, is thousands of times hotter than the surface, and scientists don't really know why. This doesn't follow the laws of physics, and allows the sun to distribute heat in a way that a normal campfire couldn't. A leading theory as to how this could work relates back to the sun's electromagnetic field, with scientists saying the mechanisms behind solar flares could also make so-called nano flares that feed this aura around the sun with energy. But so far, our observational techniques aren't able to definitively say if this is the case. Like I said before, the sun is believed to be a heavy influence on life forming on the planet. If we can run with the unknowns for a moment, what if the rise of organic compounds on our planet was directed? That's already the basis for many religions, but the most obvious and baseline scientific culprit of such a feat would be the sun. Many cultures of the past worship the sun as a father figure, a giver of life, it's obvious why a pre-science culture would see this enigmatic light in the sky as something supernatural. 
But what if this goes deeper than that? With all of these electromagnetic fields and veins coursing through the sun, what if it did actually work similar to a computer? Or even a brain? It may not follow our conventional rules of life, but as with any rule, there are always exceptions. We simply don't know enough about the sun to conclude definitively its motives behind its actions, giving rise to fantastical mysteries similar to the deep sea. So is the sun alive? We can definitively say, uh, maybe. Which isn't very definitive, I know. Like I said, I'm no expert on the stars, but it is a fun idea to toy with. I would highly recommend reading the links below for more detail if you're interested. To look up into the night sky, gazing at the countless stars, only for them to be looking back at you. I hear it's a wonderful experience that is losing favor with increased light pollution. I, I would try it if the Archive had any windows. I, I don't think I've even seen the sky since being here, or at least I don't think I have. But anyways, I encourage you to see the stars if you can. Just don't stare at the sun directly. Maybe I'll get to see the next solar eclipse. I heard I already missed one. But that's for another day. I will see you all next week with another story. Take care.